everyone. This is CV again with, uh, on the programs, Tea with CV. And uh, today we'll be discussing about uh, the, the theme and topic for this evening will be uh, benefits of uh, soilless agriculture. Uh, one may wonder why we need uh, to have uh, soilless agriculture when there's so much of soil around in the world. But the truth is that uh, most soils are depleted in terms of uh, nutrient content. They have a lot of heavy metals due to uh, a lot of pesticide usage by uh, farmers. Um, the moisture holding capacity has, is different. It's not the same as it used to be. Uh, global warming has also affected uh, soil cultivation in uh, many a way. What I'm actually going to tell you today is that uh, I'm not saying that every plant or every crop can be converted into soilless agriculture because it, it's still got to be economically viable. However, what I would say is that <clears throat> soilless agriculture or soilless horticulture can make a big difference in the world in the years to come. Um, Soilless agriculture has uh, plenty of benefits when, when you compare with the conventional agriculture uh, in that there's a lot of savings of water. We can save almost anywhere between uh, 40 to 60 percent of water. And the best part about soilless agriculture being the yields can be much higher and the number of plants that can be grown in a unit area can be much more. And the beauty of the whole thing is, since in soilless agriculture, we mix nutrition uh, in a very specified format and add that to the water and give it as fertigation to the crops. There is no partiality between two crops or two plants I mean, there is no partiality. Every plant gets the same amount of nutrition, the same electrical conductivity, the same pH and plants seem to grow as if they are growing in a, in a factory. The yields are very similar when you compare plant to plant. They bloom at the same time, they fruit almost at the same time. The quality of the quality of uh, the produce is excellent in the sense that because we apply absolute science we are able to take plants to their genetic potential when i say genetic potential what i mean is the the way a plant should produce fruits and the texture the color the taste the nutrition value has got to be the same. The advantage of growing in hydroponic or in soilless agriculture or horticulture is that if we have the right skill and we know how to empower our plants in the right way, we will be able to actually brand and sell our product or our produce. We can give the same consistency, the same reliability, the same nutritional value and so on and so forth to plants, to the fruits that come out of the produce and we can assure our market that we can supply say for example tomatoes at say 25 rupees per kilo all through the year. Any customer would be happy if you can give him a fixed price for the entire year and also guarantee or warranty the quality, the nutritional value, the size, shape, texture and the goodness of the tomato which he can enjoy 365 days of the year. But to be able to get to doing that, one has to actually understand that skill plays a very big role in growing crops. One has to learn how to empower plants. How much of light does a plant need? How much of 
what kind of temperatures can they take? Have I chosen the right seeds? Have I watered my plants at the right time? Have I overwatered my plants or underwatered my plants? Have I been careless in not seeing a pest attack in advance at, at a low threshold so that I could have taken an action? Because hydroponics and soilless agriculture is a very unforgiving science. It gives you a very small window of opportunity to take necessary action. Now, coming to the other benefits of soilless agriculture, because we use sterile media, when I say sterile media, it could be just plain water or it could be a media like coco peat or perlite or vermiculite, but they are sterile. They do not have any microbiological contamination. <coughs> Having said that, we also do not get the problem of weeds and we don't have to do weeding, de-weeding as we say, like most conventional soil farmers have to do. They have to spend a lot of time in de-weeding, removing weeds, which is labor intensive and of eats into their profit. We do not have any weed problems in soilless agriculture. Now many of people also think that hydroponics and a greenhouse have a connection. The truth is that a greenhouse is a protected structure which is supposed to keep the plants safe from rain, heavy wind, safe from pest and disease and nothing more. And yes, to do climate control if possible using foggers or it could be a fan and pad evaporative cooling system or it could be a, a well, a, in hot and humid conditions the structure or the greenhouse structure might just have circulating fans. So, hydroponics or soilless agriculture, how are we different from soil agriculturists? We are different only in one particular way. That is, we understand how to manage the root zone of the plant in the most scientific manner. Because the shoot zone depends upon the root zone. As we say, as within, so without. It's the same here. If the root zone is not happy, the shoot zone is not going to be happy. So, whatever is happening in the root zone decides what will happen in the shoot zone. So, whenever you have a problem with your plant, the first thing you do is to find out whether the balance is right, everything is right at the root zone. That's a different topic, root zone management, it's a big topic. But however, we as soilless farmers definitely have an edge over soil farmers who actually have very little control over the root zone. It could be in terms of air filled porosity, oxygen levels in the media or like if it's in soil, oxygen levels, water holding capacity, drainage, perfect drainage. Now this and cation and anion exchange capacity, all these things play a huge role in root zone management. Therefore, one has to learn this science, uh, and go deep into it and in understanding and create the perfect root and shoot balance. There are a lot of people who think that it's the food for the plant comes only from the nutrient that we give the plants along with water, which is not the case. There is another thing that happens, plants through photosynthesis also creates a lot of assimilates and passes it down even right up to the root zone, all through the plant including the root zone. Now the question is, if all the assimilates produced like amino acids and sugars and different kind of uh, things produced by photosynthesis, which being the food that plants produce by itself through photosynthesis, light, water, carbon dioxide. So. <coughs> Light in the presence of water and carbon dioxide creates photosynthesis. But the thing is, if your photosynthesis is not right, right, if it's not happening properly, what can happen is most of these assimilates do not reach the root zone. And then there are some things called root exudates. Now, root exudates also play a role in in this in the root zone. It's a big subject, not cannot be discussed just over a cup of tea. But then assimilates and exudates. These two things also have to be in a perfect balance. 
If that does not happen, then we, we are not able to take our plants to their genetic potential. There are several other benefits of soilless agriculture. One among them being that you can get more number of crops, cycles in a year, if you do it right. You don't need a tractor or a tiller to produce, uh, I mean, to uh, when you go for the next crop. So what really happens here is, we can change over from one crop to the other, say for example in a greenhouse, in as little as 48 to 72 hours. And those 48 to 72 hours again can be reduced if the staff in the greenhouse are smart enough, they know how to clean up the place, they know how to sanitize the environment before they bring in the new plants from the nursery and plant them into the greenhouse. Now, so we talked about weeds, we talked about no need of tractor and tiller, we talked about highly nutritious produce. The other advantage in, in soilless agriculture is because it's a perfect science and everything is calculated as close to accuracy as possible, we know our, our input cost perfectly. Of course, I do keep saying that it's not good to do agriculture on Excel sheets, but that doesn't mean that you won't make an Excel sheet and understand what your input costs are. Based upon your input costs, your capex, opex and whatever, you are able to understand what is the production cost per kilo, at what, what is the cost of logistics, of taking it to the market, what is the cost of packaging, what is the cost of cold storage. So all these things must will be known to a soilless farmer very accurately because of which he knows exactly if I am producing a kilogram of palak or spinach for 10 rupees a kilo and I am selling it at 15 rupees a kilo, after all expenses I know that the, my profit is 5 rupees. Now this is the kind of accuracy which when used in soilless agriculture, we are able to uh, know how much we can earn. We can also by our skill make sure that even the grading of our vegetables like tomato or cucumber or cauliflower or whatever, the, the A grade can be all, always more than 90 to 95 percent which means higher the grade, better the remuneration. The losses in compared to soil cultivation, in soil less cultivation, can be as low as 2 to 5 percent. Whereas soil farmers, if they have 100 kilograms of tomato which they have harvested, they lose almost 30 to 40 of them due to maybe blossom end rot or due to fungal attacks or due to cracking on the tomatoes or any of those kind of things. But the way we grow in our technology in soilless agriculture, we can ha we have complete control over the plants. Like when I was in Australia, we used, the farmers out there, the hydroponic farmers or the farmers using hydroponic technology, they would use the word steering the crop, like steering a car. So we have total control over our plants. We have integrated pest management, we use as much as possible organic methodologies to keep pest and disease away and at the end of the day we also uh, are able to as much as possible not use chemical pesticides in, in the, in, uh, during the uh, time we grow the crop. So there are plenty of benefits in soilless agriculture like I have just enumerated it in the last few minutes. <clears throat> it's good to go for it, but I must tell you and I must warn you that without the skill, never enter into commercial cultivation, especially using this technology. It's a very, very um, unforgiving science. It is intensive horticulture and if you do it right and if you really have the skill, only when you have good skill, good horticultural skill, you are able to take the right decisions. because. In this particular way of growing, we cannot, in this particular way of growing, we cannot be slack. We can, we have to have an attention for detail and only then we will be able to get to where we want to. Hello everyone, uh, this is CV here from CV Hydro. So, 
Today, uh, before I announce the results, I must thank you all for having watched my last video uh, log or vlog. And uh, thank you very much. I hope it made some sense to you. And uh, last week on Friday, we had, uh, or this week on Friday, we had uh, a hydroponic uh, quiz competition. And uh, it's time to announce the results of the winners. The first five, all 100 person correct entries. Um, to say the least, uh, we uh, did not get five entries with 100 percent right results, but uh, we did get people uh, as much as 90 percent right on 10 of those questions. Um, coming quickly to the results of the quiz competition, uh, we have uh, basically five entries which we will announce as winners of the competition. We have lowered the bar. That means anyone getting 80 and above uh, will be part of the first five winners. And there is a little gift for all of them, uh, which subsequently will be sent to you by courier. And the winners are uh, Mrs. Rashmi Joshi from Bangalore. Uh, Shweta Gevde from Pune, uh, Santosh Joshi from Bangalore again, and we have Harsha Redrautu uh, from Machili Patna, and Aftab Hitawala from Udaipur. So all of you will be sent a surprise gift, uh, not rather a surprise gift, I'll announce a surprise now, I'll be supposed to say surprise last time, but uh, all of you will be sent a small little, a little small nutrient kit uh, to your addresses as given on the forms, on the Google forms. Congratulations, but uh, to be honest with you, the questions that I had asked out there were very, very simple. Even if you had Googled for those answers, you would have got them. And nevertheless, it's okay, we all learn that way, no one gets 100% the first time. But there will be more quiz competitions coming up every week on Fridays and uh, I look forward to more people attending this and taking part in the quiz competition. Uh, basically, we just create small families of, you know, hydropreneurs as we call and uh, looking forward to more people taking part in the quiz as the weeks and the months follow. Uh, there will be uh, also some webinars and uh, uh, paid webinars, of course, uh, for training which are being planned. Uh, look out for announcements on our social media. And uh, keep watching our vlogs for more information and more updates. We'll keep improving your knowledge and general knowledge about hydroponics and soilless agriculture as we move forward. Uh, also, do not forget to follow us on our uh, Facebook as well as LinkedIn and Instagram, social media. There's lots and lots you can pick up from there. And uh, do not forget to subscribe to our Tea with CV YouTube channel uh, on a regular basis. We have updates and webinars and various other things uploaded out there. And uh, till then and till next week, God bless, Godspeed. Good luck. Thank you. This is CV signing off. Bye.